This video covers Power SDR KE9NS version 2.8.0.38 and all the additions that I've made since the last video. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about is this uh, over here, the timer. Um, I've added another mode. If you click it, you left click, it turns it on. It's going to be synced to the nearest minute. So it starts to down, you know, increment down. If you click it again, instead of just going to off, what it does is it it finds the next 10 minute interval in the hour. In this case, it would be 320 UTC. So therefore, in seven minutes, it will ID. If I click it again, it goes off. So you got the the three left clicks to cycle around. Um, you still have the right clicks to cycle between the different types. Uh, you can do the voice ID, uh, you know, the pre-recorded voice ID, pre-recorded CW ID, uh, the waterfall ID, which is up here. You, know, you put whatever you put in there. As long as this is green, then it'll transmit that one more time, and then it's just back to a pop-up screen. So anyway, that takes care of that. The uh, next one was. Um, in the spotter window now I have uh, moon and ISS when you go to the tracking screen I've got the gray line turned off right now just for clarity but I added the um, computations to place the zenith of the moon on the map and then uh, based on your latitude and longitude that you put in the spotter window down here uh, that you would normally use for the VOA cap um, propagation routine, but it also works for uh, not only the spotting. You know, when you do the spotting, and and it gives you a beam heading to the spot uh, to the uh, DX station. You also have a beam heading to the moon and to the ISS, and then these dots represent the ISS's motion. Uh, in one minute increments so that's where it'll be in one minute two minutes three minutes so it's it's it shows you the uh, the path that the ISS is going to take and it updates every uh, once a minute the ISS needs an internet connection uh, because it needs to be updated uh, it, you know its uh, elements need to be updated the moon does not need an internet connection it's all done internally uh, the next feature is the mechanical dials. There's this dead space up in the top, so I added VFO dials right here. If I click that, if the screen is big enough, if you if it's wide enough, it will put the mechanical dials in there. If the screen is too narrow, they won't show up even if you check the box. So um, if I rotate, you know, change frequency, the dial will change. For both VOA and VO, uh, VFOA and VFOB. Uh, the last thing I've added, let me turn the map off here, is if you, in this case, the blue lines here are the memories from the spotter window because I got memories to pan checked off. So these are actually just from your memory right in here. Now, a couple things. One is if you add uh, a URL address, an internet address, into the comments field for any of your memories, then, uh, like in here, Ham Nation, if I were to just simply right click over the top of that, that will open up that URL address. So you can have your URL addresses for your groups or your nets or whatever tied to these memories. The other thing is, it's, since it's a memory, it's got mode and, and fill, uh, frequency and mode and, and all the other parameters, filter parameters and so forth. If I were to left-click just to make sure Power SDR is in focus and then hit the control key, it not only moves this into your band pass, but it sets all the mode uh, filters and split. Whatever you got set up is now... Uh, you know, set up automatically, pulling the data from your memory panel. Uh, same goes for, in this case, here's uh, an actual DX spot, that's the green line, and the same thing goes for that. If I simply right-click on that, I will get a QRZ uh, lookup of that station, 
but if I left click to just put it in focus and hit control it'll bring that in and it'll set up everything according to whatever it can parse out from the from the actual spot like if it's if he's running split it'll try to parse out if he's in the, if he's in sideband or if he's uh, in the CW or digital portion so it'll try to set things accordingly and then the last is for the sh uh, for the shortwave if I activate the shortwave list and now you got all the shortwave stations that are on right now uh, the exact same thing if I were to right click then it will use that name and try to do a Google search a shortwave Google search for that particular uh, station otherwise if I were to left click and then hit the control key then it tries to put this in um, in the mode that it thinks it's in, you know, that it should be in, and, and this all the settings for that particular shortwave station. So it works for all three, you know, DX spot, a memory, and the shortwave list. Uh, one last thing, and that is when you're doing your recordings, you, and you know, either this record ID um, for your own little manual recordings, or the four recordings here, uh, where you click them, and then it automatically lets you just start start a recording, and then click it again to, to save it and store it uh, they go through all these settings in here the mic settings uh, so if you have the compressor on if you have the filter narrow it will record it'll make a recording is the, the width of your filters it's it's all affected by this so when you play it back it ignores all this it doesn't ignore your your transmit filter bandwidth down here but it ignores like the the compression and so forth so it's only going to do it the one time during the recording when you play it back it's simply going to play it back natively but to the bandwidth you selected so um, if you record it narrow even though you start to run let's say you decide to run wide it's still going to play back narrow because you've you've already limited it in this case it would be uh, 2.9k so if you try to transmit it 4k it your recording is already at 2.9 uh, so just be aware of that during your recordings but uh, that is it for this